You are watching Business Access TV. Business Access. Business Access. Business Access. Business Access. Business Access. You are watching Business Access TV. Business Access TV. Serious. Serious about business. Serious about business. Business Access TV is here at the Transformative Leadership in Health Seminar, put on by the Para Caribe Consulting Limited. I'm your host, Amita Prasadweb. Please stay tuned for highlights. We are so used to taking care of everyone else, our patients, our guests, our customers, our families, and we sometimes forget to take care of and to invest in ourselves. Luckily, many of us have some really supportive and loving friends, family, and colleagues who have been there to tap us on the shoulders with words of encouragement that say, hey, slow down. Hey, take a break. Hey, you eat yet? You are in good company today among like-minded individuals you may not have otherwise met in any other forum. Our health infrastructure relies on several areas to achieve efficient and effective delivery of services. I commend Caribe Wellness Consulting for its contribution building, in building the capacity of our most important resource, our healthcare professionals. Through this workshop, our health professionals will get an opportunity to build their leadership and management competences. And I assure you, this is not an area covered in medical school. In fact, my own leadership stemmed from my many years in the military and then capped with uh, leadership courses in my Fulbright Fellowship at Hopkins. So it doesn't come naturally, uh, but you can learn it. So everything we're going to do today is highly interactive. It's we're going to teach you some skills, we're going to work on some tools, and then we're going to have you play with it. And it, all throughout the day, it's going to be building to a meaningful conversation that we're going to have that we call owning the ugly. How do we really deal with some of the tough issues? So be prepared to jump in and work with us as we go through the day. Johan said something earlier that really struck me. He said, we are blessed with the insight that something is just not right. May that be our blessing today. And let's see if we can at least find one or two ways to make things better. We work with a number of different industries and sectors. So health is one of our bigger uh, client fields. And then also engineering, um, some finance and accounting, and a variety of different industries. But those are some of the bigger ones. Uh, you're here today at the Transformative Leadership in Health Seminar. What's the feedback like thus far? We have been, first of all, we've been amazed at how engaged and excited a lot of folks have taken a day off. I mean, this is Saturday and they've worked all week and they're here and they're participating and they're excited and they're saying, I can take this back. And one of the other really interesting things is we're having great discussion about real serious issues and how they can apply these tools and improve healthcare in Jamaica. Yeah, people are thinking hard and they're working hard and digging deep to find the answers that are going to make a difference for, for their teams and for their organizations. What I'm noticing is that you have more interactive sessions. Um, what's the importance of having a more interactive session as opposed to a, a general lecture? Well, leadership is not just something you learn. Leadership is something you do. And so if you're not applying what you're learning, you're not really leading. And so it's really a, important to get people working in, with the tools and actually using them in order to be able to use them when they get back to their teams. Yeah, whenever we do a workshop, we teach a skill and then we immediately apply it and give them a way to think about real work. And so it's not like they learn, 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 and then have to go apply it when they get back. They've been thinking about it and building a strategy and a plan the whole time. Uh, you have a number of different steps or, I guess, tools um, to help everyone here. What would you say are some major challenges in, in regards to this specific sector, health? There is so much change in health and there are so many di shifting dynamics and what I'm finding, we're finding, is that people really care and they want to make a difference and they're extremely passionate and how do we do that and really focus on one or two th or three most important things as opposed to trying to tackle everything. And the, the intersection of 
clinical and administration. So how do you balance those patient outcomes and the business of medicine? And medical care is a business. So how do you do both? And so we're finding so many rich conversations in medical leadership uh, here in Jamaica and in the U.S. and wherever we may be that are really focusing on that question. So not only are you guys uh, president and CEO, but you're also authors. Talk to me about the book. So this is our book. It's Winning Well, A Manager's Guide to Getting Results Without Losing Your Soul. And we ground everything we're doing, and in fact, this is what we're also talking about today, is in the internal values of confidence and humility, and then the external focus of results and relationships. And then from there, we have a series of techniques and tools and processes that we go into very specific details in the book. And Karen and I both spent together 40 years in leadership roles, frontline leadership, mid, uh, middle level management, and executive leadership. And the book is a compilation of all of that wisdom about how you lead in those different roles uh, and make that difference for your people. The problem with ditching in drama, the diaper drama and speaking the truth um, is probably a cultural thing and a, uh, in terms of our system where we don't have a lot of accountability, transparency and responsibility, you would like to engage the drama and you'd like to deal with it very openly. But it's difficult to do that because in a system that doesn't give you that safe space to do it and a lot of your rules and your could be, you know, you, you go through things, your, your focus on function being politicized. When you do that, you might actually just implode the team and just make the team even more inefficient than it is as opposed to if you went openly about it and you said, okay, you'd increase productivity, increase efficiency because you're tackling those problems. So I think it's probably a cultural thing in this region. You see me here in this corner, put the people first. Why do you think that happens? Because of exactly what he said, the culture of this place. I form great relationships where there is accountability and punctuality. I cannot function where there is lack of accountability and where there is lateness. And so by and large, you see the size of the group over there? That's what I'm saying. I don't function so well in Jamaica in groups because not because I hate people or anything, but I cannot take the lack of accountability and the lateness. But we have not set up a culture where people can be accountable and feel that they owe it to themselves, to other people, and that it is the only way to be to function in a proper and progressive fashion. It drives me mad. As my group members expressed, sometimes we, it's not that we don't want to focus on one thing, but everything becomes primary. It's like every task that we get assigned to us, we put it as number one. So everything else, you know, we would try to compound and get it done all at once. And because of that is we somehow lose focus or we don't have the time for self. So I'm here at Trusting the Trenches. Um, so I got a little understanding of what it is. Um, that's basically listening. If, if I could put it in simple terms, like listening to the grassroots, basically, right? Um, and I find it difficult because of the first word, trust. Um, I do find it a little difficult to trust persons because I think, does everyone have the best interest of the organization at heart? And that is a problem to me. Mm. Um, also, Thinking about incorporating everybody's opinion, I think, can the organization have a vision, a goal, if everyone has something different to say? And, you know, if you don't incorporate everybody's opinions, then you have contention and um, things don't get done. So that's where I have a problem with trusting trend, the trenches. Parker Consulting is known by healthcare workers across the region for delivering cutting edge, continuing medical education that keeps healthcare workers up to date. So healthcare workers have traditionally had to take a day off or two days off to travel into Kingston or Montego Bay to do a, a seminar, a training seminar. But Paracaribe has been known for its delivery of content online. So we use webinars with highly qualified researchers and um, scientists from across the globe who stream into the homes and offices of medical doctors. So they don't need to take the day off to travel into Kingston and they still are kept up to speed with developments in the medical field. Okay. Talk to us about the purpose of today's Right. 
from our experience, we're not only involved in training healthcare workers online, but we have been involved in a series of training initiatives with healthcare workers, both technical as well as personal and professional development and communication strategies and so on. And one of the things that we've identified from our experience is that there are, are gaps, or let me say opportunities, um, for building and, and bolstering uh, leadership competencies. So this forum was created to help healthcare workers to become better leaders by transferring skills and experience and knowledge from the private sector and from academia into the public sector and public space. And today we're very pleased to have two world-renowned consultants from Washington DC and Colorado um, in the US, Karen Hurt and David Dye. They're both authors of several books who have been featured in magazines such as Time Magazine, Fortune, and um, the Huffington Post. And I met them in Washington DC when I was doing my fellowship in the US, and I found them to be affable and very passionate about their work in, in building leadership competencies among not just healthcare workers, but businesses. And welcome back to Transformative Leadership in Health Seminar. Let's go straight to David Dye. The reason I had you look at each other and acknowledge one another is that we'll, we want to come back to Jamaica, but Karen and I are not going to be here next week when you go back to work <laughs> and as you try to do these things. So who in the room can you connect with to go on the journey together in the areas that you're growing? And who in the room can you connect with that is a resource for you to say, you know, I am struggling with owning the other. I am struggling with what's most important and staying focused. And to connect with them, get their phone number, get their email address, WhatsApp them and connect so that you're able to go on that journey. I thought it was a very good seminar and I thought that the timing was right. Uh, it has to do with transformational leadership in the health sector. And as you're aware, our health sector has a lot of issues and we need to transform it in a way that is more customer service and customer excellence oriented and I thought that this particular seminar workshop was very helpful in terms of providing ideas as to how those of us who are administrators can work together and work through people for better results and to make for the transformation that is needed in the sector. I had completely missed the big picture has that ever happened to you? Yes. You're working hard, you're motivated, you care. And somebody says, that's not what I expected. If Ben had said to me, mom, the most important thing, right? I would have approached it a completely different way. Instead of being down at the 50 yard line, I would have been up at the top of the stands. Instead of a big lens, I'd just take my phone and go like this, right? <laughs> One good conversation about expectations can prevent 14 why didn't you conversations. So when we're talking about accountability, when we're talking about results, that's what we're talking about. How do you start by focusing on what, oh, you missed it, Susan, we we're just talking about accountability. Uh, <laughs> well, wait, one good conversation about expectations can prevent a lot of these, why didn't you conversations? Focus on what's most important. I believe that the, the presentations today, um, there are timely ones talking about leadership. It's just basically presenting leadership in a different way. There are things that we, we would know as leaders already, but just how the presenters have come across in a more creative way has added a little bit more of a, you know, a difference to information that we would have had already had. The best way to deal with accountability conversations is to not have to have them in the first place, right? It's to avoid them, not avoid having them, it's to avoid the need for them. And the way we avoid the need for them is to make sure we're all on the same page. This is the foundation of leadership effectiveness. So we're going to camp out here for a little bit and look at some different aspects of it. What is most important? 
Is it shared? This is a tool that we use. It's called the expectations matrix. And it's a tool that we use to find out, are we on the same page? Okay. What does success look like is a, word, is a question that we use quite a bit. So you can, is this in your hand out? So you can, it's just a two axis graph. You don't need the fancy graphic. You can just draw it at the top. What do you expect or what do your people expect? What do they not expect? What do you not expect? What do you receive and what do you not receive? And then you look at the interaction between these. So are there things you expect from your colleagues, from yourself, from your team, and you're receiving those things? Are you communicating and expressing appreciation for them? And we'll talk a little bit more about how to encourage and specifically how to do that. But have a conversation around those, show recognition and appreciate them. Are there things that you don't expect and you're not receiving? You don't expect to have problems with this and you're not. And have you occasionally, are you reminding people and, and showing appreciation for those? And do we take a very short break more when we return? And welcome back to the Transformative Leadership in Health Seminar. We believe that the health sector is a really important sector. I mean, how many of us have grandmothers, grandfathers, mothers, brothers, sisters who have to interface with the health sector? And therefore, leadership within the health sector is important. And as I've established before, communication skills are really crucial when it comes on to leading your people. If you think of it, there are some things that we would never do unless we had leaders taking us down those directions. And so we felt that a conference like this would be really empowering. And we've been partners with Dr. White before, doing web, web sessions with uh, other health professionals, etc. And we thought it was a really wonderful opportunity to continue that partnership. We were invited to, to sponsor the activity by Mr. Johan White and we thought it was a good opportunity because we feel like continuing education is very medical education or leadership in um, education is good um, and it will assist us in our field of medicine. Uh, we operate, well, hospital operates at 24 hour medical and emergency facility in on the north coast and we're always recruiting and we're interested in you know professionals that are trained and have leadership qualities um, one of the MITs that I came up with and basically it would cover all the other two that would follow um, would be to achieve the appropriate nurse patient ratio yeah. and um, in achieving the appropriate nurse patient ratio, we would see better quality care being offered to our, pa to our patients. Um, we would avoid nurse burnout. Um, we would have nurses being more committed and wanting to come to work because the stressors and the, the um, complications that are accompanying the excess patients that they will have to care for and the problems that follow therefore will be eliminated. That was so perfectly articulated. Thank you so much. So, so on that note, one of the ways you know that you have found an MIT, a most important thing, when you're talking about big goals, is you can ask the question, if we did one thing and one thing only that would make so many other things unnecessary or better, what would that be? And so that's one that you helped identify that would, if you do this one thing, then it will do a lot of other things for us. Because it could have been there, well, those could have been four goals. Well, we need nurse engagement. We need to stop nurse turnover. We need to have, improve the patient experience. This could be all these goals. But instead she says, no, we're going to do one thing, and then it solves for the others. Well, it is really a great opportunity to come and share what Heritage is about to this group. I was invited by Johan. And it's essentially just to share with parents or grandparents, aunts, uncles, the importance of saving for a child's college education. That's what we are all about. We help to facilitate individuals to put aside funds until the child is ready for college. Now, anybody can start for a child under the age of 14. The plan matures when the child is ready to go to college, which is about age 18 thereabout. 
It's an event about health, so NCB Insurance, you know, being an insurance company, we do provide insurance for critical illnesses, accidental death and dismemberment plans, so hence why we're here today. Anything that has to do with wellness, NCB Insurance, integral in the wellness of Jamaica, so we're here today. It is human nature for us, and I do this all the time, when confronted with a big idea to go, okay, here are five reasons we can't do that. Especially if it's my idea. Especially if it's Karen's idea. Then I have 10 reasons we can't do that, right? But the way to change that for a leadership mindset is to say, okay, yes, that's challenging. How can we? If we could, how would we? How can we do this? And to start answering that question. And in a moment, your brain will change and start finding solutions. Very, very powerful. How, so what does success look like? Define your MITs your top two or three big, huge goals that you're gonna go after, and then you start asking yourself, how can we get there? And we'll talk a little bit more about what comes next as we keep going. Well, certainly, um, one of the themes that we have used is being wealthy, healthy, and strong. So healthcare, and good healthcare means a lot to us. It impacts on our health insurance policies, impacts on our life insurance policies, and our critical illness policies as well. We provide um, for policies for our clients to help them deal with those challenges. A program like this, which, which looks at physicians and assisting them with leadership skills, with, with management administrative skills, is badly needed. I mean, we do a lot of medicine in medical school. We certainly hardly get anything in this area. Uh, and it doesn't come naturally. Some people have it, some don't, but you can learn it. And so really it's an excellent initiative to reach out to physicians and it doesn't matter how long you've been in medicine, young physicians, older physicians, it's very helpful, but very useful. That's it from us here. I've been your host, Amit Prasad Webb, and you're watching Business Access TV, serious about business.